Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video is a continuation in my series of easy to sew gifts using scraps or stash fabric. In today's video, we're going to be making this really simple apron. If this is a great beginner project, in fact, this apron is one of the first things that I ever learned how to sew when I took sewing in high school. This is my high school apron. I still use it to this day. And after I learned to sew this apron, I was totally hooked on sewing. I sewed probably three or four aprons as gifts that Christmas and gave them to all my relatives. It's a really nice gift that you can give to anybody, especially somebody who loves to cook. So I love that it just uses a little bit of fabric. It's nearly zero waste and it's a great stash buster. This apron is just made out of a simple quilting cotton. Um, if you have a novelty print, that could be really fun to use. So this apron is made kind of out of a medium weight cotton. I bought it in Japan a few years ago. I had just over a yard of this fabric and I'm really glad that I finally thought to make an apron with it. I think it looks really cute. <laughs> so this is a double-sided apron. You could even use contrasting fabric if you want for the back and front. It has a neck strap which just goes over your head and then two waist ties. If you need to make it a little bit larger, you could just make longer waist ties. So even with just about a yard, you can still make a pretty good size apron. I'm five foot 11 and this apron goes all the way down to my knees. So grab your fabric and let's get started. So here I have my little piece of fabric and it is only 43 inches from selvage to selvage and I had just over a yard of it. So not very much. And I want to maximize my apron from this piece of fabric. I've gone ahead and I've cut two strips off the bottom that are three and three quarter inches long. I'm going to use these for the straps that go around the waist and the neck. Two of these strips will be for the waist straps and then I'm going to use one strip for the neck. If you want to be extra zero waste with your fabric, you could use two strips for the neck strap and then just tie them together at the back of the neck. So here I have my fabric and I have my selvages aligned and this is the fold. I'm going to cut this piece of fabric in half right along that fold. So I'm just going to mark with my little fabric marker, this folded edge, and I'm going to use my rotary cutter and my ruler and the lines in my fabric. One of these is going to be the front of my apron and the other is going to be the back. Here's one of my pieces of fabric and I've folded it in half lengthwise. Here's the folded edge and here's the raw edge or selvage edge. You can also cut away your selvages if you want. I don't have very wide fabric, so I'm leaving them on. And you want this part to be like about a, like 10 to 12 inches wide. And I am going to cut away a little bit here that's going to be the opening for the armhole. So this part is going over the chest and then down below goes over the waist and hips. So first from my folded edge, I'm going to measure five inches and mark that with my fabric marker. Then from this five inch mark, I measure down 10 and a half inches and I'll mark a little bit here and at the raw edge. Now I'm just going to freehand this and I want it to be a nice little curve. If you have a French curve ruler, you could also use that. And then I'm just going to use my rotary cutter and cut this away. All right, then this is the front of our apron. So now we want to do the same thing with the back of our apron. And what we can do is just take this front piece or even take the piece we cut out and lay it on top. And you just want to try to get it nice and aligned. Even put a ruler down to check it. And then you can use your fabric marker and mark that curve. Or if you're bold, you can just come in with your rotary cutter and cut away that same little bit. All right. Now we have everything cut out and ready to sew. 
Now, to be truly zero waste, we would find a way to use these four little pieces that we cut out. And they could make really nice little pockets. I think that could be really cute. But I'm gonna put these into my scrap pile and make them into one of my improvisational quilts. If you wanna learn more about my improvisational quilts, I have a newsletter that you can sign up for in the show notes. We're going to set aside the front and back for now. Grab your straps and you wanna fold it with the right sides together lengthwise. Just fold it in half and then you can put in a few pins. All right, so get all three straps folded right sides together and pinned and head over to the sewing machine. My machine is set up with a straight stitch and I'm using a 3 8 7 inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and end of every seam and just stitch along one long edge. <laughs> For the two waist straps, you'll wanna stitch down to the end and before you get to the end, lift your presser foot and pivot and then we'll stitch from this raw edge to the folded edge and back stitch there. For the two waist ties, you'll have one end that has an opening and the other end will be stitched across and then for your neck strap, both ends will have an opening. Now we want to turn our straps right side out and press them. I'm going to start with my neck strap that has the openings at either end and I've put a safety pin on one end. I'm going to use this to turn the fabric tube right side out. So I'm just pushing my safety pin inside the tube and then I will pull the fabric over it. If you're using a really thick fabric, you might wanna trim your seam allowance down a little bit. It'll help it turn right side out. Here we go. After you get it started a little bit, it'll be much easier. There we go. The beginning is the hardest part. Okay. Okay, we took the safety pin out and now we wanna press this. I wanna press it with my seam on one side. And sometimes what I'll do to help it get really flat and get that seam as far to the side as possible is I'll press my seam al allowance kind of in the middle. And then I'll rearrange the fabric. I'll shift it a little bit and you can just kind of roll it with your fingers and then press it so that seam allowance is right on the side. For our waist tie, you'll wanna find the end where we've stitched this end and just trim it a little bit. Just trim that corner off, but be careful not to cut through the stitching. Then I'm gonna take a knitting needle. I'm going to use the blunt end of my knitting needle to push my fabric inside the tube and turn it right side out. So I've started it with my fingers and then I'm just gonna push the fabric over my knitting needle. And again, it's tricky to get it started, but once you get it in there, it'll go pretty quickly. Um, there are other tools like um, tube turners that can also do this. And you could also stand your knitting needle up like this and kind of wiggle your fabric down. Okay, now we're going really nice and smoothly. All the way right side out. Shake your knitting needle out. And then use the pointy end and stick it back in your tube. And you just wanna gently push out the corners of the waist ties. Okay, and then we're gonna press this just the same as we did our next strap. Okay, and then you repeat for your second waist tie. I'm going to be top stitching the body of the apron. And if you also want your ties and straps to be top stitched, I recommend doing that now. And for the necktie, I would just top stitch the long sides 
And for the waist ties, you want to top stitch the long sides and the end that is sewn together. So around three sides. So go ahead, top stitch your straps and meet me back here. Our straps are all done and this is the front or back of the apron. So you want to make sure that you have your apron front right side up and then we're going to pin our straps to the right side. If you want to have your apron be reversible, I recommend top stitching on any pockets right now. You could do one pocket on the front and then another on the back. I'm going to be skipping pockets because I usually don't use them on my aprons. First, I'm going to get the neck strap and that's the one that has raw edges at both ends and I'm going to pin it to the top of my apron. Now I'm going to leave a space of about one half inch on either side. I'm using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance so that one half inch will give me a little bit of extra room so that my strap doesn't get caught on the edge. Then grab one of your waist ties and take the raw edge end and we're going to pin it to the side. Again, I'm just going to measure one half inch away from that top edge and repeat with the other waist tie. Now you can go ahead and take this over to the machine and just do a little basting stitch across each strap at three eighths of an inch. Or if you're feeling like a rebel, you can grab the back of your apron and pin it to the front. And we wanna place these right sides together and just line up all the edges. So I like to get pins kind of in all the corners and then you'll wanna gently move your neck strap out of the way and put a few pins in along this curve. Now we wanna line up our edges all the way to the bottom of our apron. You wanna pin your apron all the way around and then take it over to the sewing machine. All right, I'm going to start at the bottom of my apron and I've marked a starting and stopping point, maybe about five inches big. And I'm using a straight stitch with my three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm just gonna take these pins out and I will do a back stitch at the beginning and end. Okay, I've stitched all the way around, pivoting at the corners and being really careful not to catch my straps in the stitching, except for these points where I really want them attached. Let's head over to the pressing station. Before we turn our apron right side out, we wanna do a little bit of trimming to our seam allowances. At every corner, you wanna just clip right across the corner you could also kind of clip a little angle right here, and this will help you get a sharper point. Do that on all your corners. And you just want to be careful that you don't cut through your stitching line. And then along our curve right here, I'm just going to cut out some little triangles. And this will help our curve lay flat when we turn it right side out. So again, don't cut into your stitching line, just cut up really close to it and you cut a little triangle. And I really like to use these tiny scissors for this process because I can get really close and accurate. Okay, so you'll just do something like that on each side. I'm also going to grade my seam allowance and I'm gonna do this because my fabric is a little bit thick and all that means is that I'm cutting one of my seam allowances shorter than the other. And what this does is it makes kind of a smoother transition of the seam allowance. So if they're both the same length, you can kind of get a noticeable lump underneath your fabric. I'm gonna cut through the strap too. Um, but when you have one that's a little bit longer and one that's shorter, it's just a more gradual transition. So I'm gonna go around and do that to every edge. If you are using a fabric like quilting cotton, then it's not really as 
important because um, the fabric's not very thick. But I can kind of tell, like just from my straps, that this fabric is thick and will leave a lump. Okay, once you get everything trimmed up, I'm gonna turn it right side out through the opening at the bottom. Just reach your hand in and pull it, push it through. And then to help push my corners through, I'm gonna use this knitting needle and just gently push the corners out. If you don't have a knitting needle, you could also use a chopstick um, or a bone folder, kind of whatever you have on hand. I'm just gonna gently poke it and pull my straps. Now we're just gonna give this a really good press. So I just wanna get my seam line kind of right at the folded edge. Sometimes it can be tricky to get this really flat. Sometimes when you press it, it'll kind of go a little bit off or the seam line will be kind of buried down in between the folds. And so one thing you could do is actually kind of adjust your fabric over and press it flat just on its own. So just kind of press it flat here and then move your fabric and you'll be able to more easily get that seam line right on the edge. And this is just something that can take a little bit of practice with your ironing. Um, I like to kind of push with my fingers and kind of roll the fabric to get the seam line right at the edge of my fold. But honestly, if you don't get it right at the edge of your fold, you probably will never notice. But if you've done a good job cutting and sewing everything straight, you kind of want your apron to be straight in the end. You want to go all the way around. Um, down here at my opening, I'm going to tuck in my fabric and press it and just want it to be straight like everything else. If you want, you can put some pins in here to hold this. After you get everything pressed, you want to take your apron back over to the sewing machine and we will top stitch all around every edge. And then we're all done with our apron. I have my apron all pressed and I'm going to top stitch around the edge and close up this hole at the bottom. So I'm using a straight stitch with a 3.0 length and I'm gonna start at the bottom down here and I'm gonna stitch about 1 8 of an inch away from the folded edge. <laughs> Right, you just meet up with the stitching where you started and do a little back stitch. Okay, our apron is all done. Well, I hope that you enjoyed making your simple apron. I really love mine and I was really excited to finally use this fabric. I think it's a really beautiful fabric and hopefully I don't get it too stained with all of my cooking endeavors. After sewing the apron, I only have a little bit of fabric left over. So as I mentioned, you could use this fabric to make a pocket. You could square off the bottom and just have a simple rectangle pocket. You could sew two of these together and make a kind of a curved pocket. You could also use these to make a curved zippered pouch, or I think you could even use them to make a tailor's ham. Just sew them together down the middle and then sew the four pieces together around the outside and fill it with scraps. I have an e-course all about improvisational quilting that I'm going to launch at the end of November, beginning of December. If you want to learn more about that course and find out when it launches, you can sign up for my newsletter down in the show notes. And make sure to check out the show notes for the links to my other tutorials for making handmade holiday gifts. If you want to support the channel and this free content, I have a link down in the show notes to my pattern shop. And if you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the subscribe button. Happy sewing.